Hey guys, what's up? It's Charlie here and today we're going to be looking at 10 innocent kids who went to prison. Coming in at number 10 we have Alex King. This kid looks very innocent. He's well dressed and seems very normal, so you might assume he's never done anything wrong. But Alex King, who was 12 at the time, was sent to jail. He had formed a relationship with his neighbor Ricky Chavez. They'd made love notes and did illegal substances together. But one day, Ricky told Alex to hit his dad with a metal baseball bat as his dad was asleep. Alex did this and took his dad's life. The court case led to some debate, as some say Alex was to blame, but others say the young boy was clearly manipulated by Ricky Chavez. This meant he was put away for 12 years behind bars and was released in 2013. He now wants to live a normal life and is apparently working in a restaurant and living in California. Do you think Alex is to blame or his neighbor Ricky? Next up is Mary Bell. This is one innocent looking girl who ended up behind bars. That's already frightening, but wait until I tell you where she is now. Mary Bell took two boys' lives, named Martin Brown and Brian Howe. They were four and three years old and were actually two separate incidents. Mary was just 10 years old the first time and 11 years old the second time she took a life. The judge called her a serious danger and she was placed in a child prison named Red Bank. Later, she was moved to an adult prison where she stayed for 12 years. But when she was freed, she was given a new identity to protect her. That's right, she is freely walking the streets today. Reports now say she's a mother, which is very scary for her kid. And every year, apparent sightings of Mary are still all over the press. Next up, we have Heather Opal. A few years back, Barbara Opal got into an argument with her boss. She got mad and wanted him gone, so she did what any reasonable person would do and plotted to end her boss's life. She told her daughter Heather Opal that she had to take her boss's life, and even said she would pay her if she did it. So Heather pretended to ask for a jobless store, but then used a knife to cut her mum's boss, taking his life. And what makes this even worse is that the guy was very ill. After the hit was carried out, Barbara paid Heather $200. But it didn't take long for her to get captured and sentenced to prison time despite her mother telling her to commit the crime. But don't worry, Barbara was also punished with 20 years behind bars, which is surprisingly less than her daughter. Heather was only 12 years old, but she was sentenced to life behind bars. Some say this is too harsh, but others say she deserves it for what she did. What do you think? Next up is Max McDougall. We've seen kids in prison who have done some really bad things on this list, but not every kid behind bars has done something wrong. Max McDougall has committed no crimes as he's only four years old. His mother Jacqueline on the other hand has. She stole silverware to support her substance habit and she was sentenced to prison time. She was pregnant when she went to prison and Max has grown up with her behind bars. Jacqueline says it's good as prison was the wake up call she needed to get clean, but you still do have to feel bad for little Max who has to grow up in prison with his mom. Next up, we have Nate Anderson. This criminal kid looks incredibly innocent and scared in court. But when he was just 15, he shot his 29-year-old sister named Amanda in the head. He confessed to doing it and asked his family for forgiveness, which they gave him. For some mysterious reason, the family wanted to keep his motivation for this a secret. They got their wish, and after Anderson pleaded guilty, there was no trial. At 16, he was sentenced to solitary confinement as a safety precaution against other inmates. But now, he'll be forced to live in a regular adult prison. He'll serve 20 years behind bars, but will be eligible for parole in 10. I just want to know why his family wanted to keep why Nate did this a secret. Next up is Nicole Kiffmiller. When we think of a teenage Instagram blogger, we think of a regular girl who has a nice life. But this is one teenage blogger who is locked behind bars. She shocked the world when she took the life of her newborn son when she was 19. She bought a self-birthing kit and secretly had the baby. She then left the baby in a trash container while she tried to cover her tracks. But she was later found out and said she didn't want the embarrassment of her parents finding out she had a baby at 19. At first, she blamed the baby's father, but refused to give his name. She pleaded not guilty and said thanks to her age, she didn't realize what she was doing. But we all know right from wrong at age 19, so the judge and jury didn't buy it and sentenced her to 8 to 14 years in prison. This is one crazy prison sentence for anyone, especially a kid. Next up is Antonio Barbo. This kid looks innocent enough, but this is far from his true self. This criminal kid shocked the world not only for what his crime was, but for who his victim was. He hacked at his grandma with an axe, causing her demise. He then ran to her bathroom and threw up. He was crying when he was explaining what happened in court, so his attorney had to take over. But it was so sad, his attorney began to cry too. What happened was he originally just wanted to rob his grandmother, but his accomplice had messed things up, and he said he thought this was the only option. Antonio called it a moment of madness. But the judge said it was the worst crime he'd ever seen, and sentenced him to 36 years in jail. Meaning that Antonio won't be released until he's at least 50. 
Next up is Zachary Neagle. This is the most baby-faced criminal on this entire list. In 2009, Zachary shotgunned his dad in the head while he was sleeping. He was just 14 at the time and was chained up in court. He sat looking terrified at his lawyer during the hearing and was found guilty. The reason why Zachary did this was apparently because his father was nasty to him in a very big way somehow and he felt he had to save himself and his brother and sister. But despite this, now Zach will face 14 years behind bars, meaning he will eventually be transferred to an adult's prison. Online petitions have actually been made to prevent this, but who knows if they'll work. Do you think this is too harsh considering Zachary's motives, or not? Coming up next is Jessica Carline. This is one kid who looks very innocent, but isn't. And I guarantee you'll never see a more scared person in court. In 2014, this 17 year old girl was driving a big red Chevy, but she'd been inhaling a substance at the time, which ironically made her crash into a hospital. This sadly took the lives of two people. She said she just wanted to have fun and drive around, but things went horribly wrong. She was sentenced to a massive 40 years behind bars, which many say is way too far. But seeing as she did do something really bad, what do you think about this? Next up is Josh Phillips. Josh Phillips is the youngest person to ever receive a life sentence. When he was just 14, he took the life of Maddie Clifton. He claimed a baseball hit Maddie's head while they were playing, but the courts didn't believe this one bit and were harsh on Josh as a result. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He's already spent nearly half his life behind bars and is currently at a maximum security prison. Since going to prison, he's realized his true passion is education, and he actually graduated high school and college from prison. Since then, laws have changed and judges are no longer allowed to give kids life sentences without the possibility of parole. Now Josh's case is being reviewed, and he may be out sooner than he thought. The most dangerous kids in the world. Coming in at number 10, we have Morgan Giza and Anissa Wire. Creepypastas are fake horror stories spread online that can sometimes be pretty scary, but at least they're not in the real world, right? Well, in 2014, two 12 year old girls brought what was a scary story for entertainment into reality. They spent a year planning to sacrifice someone with the hopes they would please Slender Man. So, one Saturday, the two girls named Morgan and Anissa convinced one of their middle school classmates to go into the woods where they lived in Wisconsin. They tried to take the girl named Peyton Lutner's life with a knife. When they thought they were done, they walked away, leaving Peyton in the woods. However, Peyton miraculously lived and was able to crawl to a local house to call for help. She was in hospital for a few days and thankfully made a full recovery. Afterwards, the creator of Slenderman actually gave his condolences as to what happened and gave Peyton some money. The two girls were sentenced to prison time at first, but this was later changed to 25 years in a mental home. Some were angry at this, saying they should be in jail forever. What do you think about this crazy event of a fake scary story turning real? One thing's for sure, it makes Morgan and Anissa two of the most dangerous children ever to live. Next up, we have Girl A. On June 1st, 2004, a girl who can legally only be referred to as Girl A took the life of her fellow classmate. At 11 years old, Girl A used a knife on Satomi Mitaro, who was also 11 at the time. It happened at an elementary school in Sasebo, Japan. The girl is kind of a mystery, as she was only 12, meaning that by Japanese law, she couldn't be photographed or named. However, I'm not in Japan, so I can tell you her name is actually Natsumi. A teacher found out about what she did pretty soon and after she was taken to a police station. She spent the night saying, I'm so sorry to the police and crying. But why did such an innocent girl do this? Well, apparently Satomi had called Natsumi a goody goody, which was a reference to her weight. Believe it or not, all she was sentenced to was two years in a mental home. This became a Japanese meme as the reason why they should lower the age of criminal responsibility. Now, I'm no expert on this, but I'm sure all of you are, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm personally torn as some people say she didn't know what she was doing down to her age, but others disagree. Next up is the Beaver Brothers. This one took place in July 2015 in Oklahoma. Two brothers named Robert, who was 18, and Michael, who was 16, took the life of their entire family. This included their parents and two out of their four siblings with a knife. But that's not all. What they were plotting was way worse. They were plotting a mass life taking to gain fame. Believe it or not, this is the motivation behind many criminals, which is why some news outlets like Philip DeFranco and more don't show the criminals' faces. The brothers were called the most evil brothers in America by the press and were sent to jail. But why did the brothers not take the lives of all of their siblings and only two out of the four? Well, they first took the lives of David and April Beaver, their mum and dad, and then did the same with their 12-year-old brother Daniel. Seven-year-old Christopher and five-year-old Victoria met the same fate. They then tried to do the same to their 13-year-old sister, but failed, and even told her they'd do the same to their two-year-old sister as well. However, the two-year-old was left unharmed and was taken into foster care. This sure is one crazy story of two very dangerous brothers. 
coming up next, we have Jasmine Richards. This is one of the most famous dangerous kids in the world. Jasmine Richards from Alberta, USA had a boyfriend named Jeremy Stank. They were both pretty odd and liked to talk about things most people would find scary. A few times, Jasmine and Jeremy had talked about taking the lives of Jasmine's family. This was because Jasmine's parents had punished her for dating Jeremy as he was 23 and she was 12. However, Jasmine said it was all a joke and they were never doing it in a serious way. However, in 2006, one night, Jeremy entered the Richards' household and took the lives of Jasmine's parents. She said she was shocked and was in a zombie state, whatever that means, and she couldn't stop or go for help. I don't know about that, but she then did what Jeremy did to her parents, but to her own brother. She was only sentenced to 10 years in the mental ward, probably because of her age, and is out now. However, Jeremy was locked up for 25 years with parole and will be out in 2034. Next up is Shirley Wolf and Cindy Collier. One day, two girls named Shirley, who was 14, and Cindy, who was 15, knocked on the door of Anna Brackett, who was 85. They said a weirdo was following them, and they wanted to come inside and use her phone. Anna let the girls in, but then all of a sudden, they took her life with a knife and ran out of the door. The creepy thing is, Anna was found by her son, who had just driven past the two girls and thought nothing of them. And if you want something even more creepy, the two girls had just done the same thing to another woman before what they did to Anna. They knocked on her door and entered the house, but her husband came into the room, so they decided to leave. The woman said they were very odd, and cleaned the glasses she'd gave them and wiped their phone with cleaning gel after she was done using it. This was to try and get rid of their fingerprints, but even though they did this, it didn't take long for cops to track down the teens. The duo were sentenced to a long time in a mental ward. But why did they do this, you're probably asking? Well, here's the most messed up part. They said they just did it for fun. Most 14 and 15 year olds watch movies or go to the mall for fun, but these two girls did this. Next up is Nehemiah Griego. This one took place in New Mexico in 2013. A 15-year-old boy named Nehemiah Griego decided to take his mom's life one night with a 22 caliber rifle. His brother then woke up and Nehemiah showed him what he'd done. His brother then became upset, so Nehemiah did what he did to his mom but to his brother, who was only 9. He then went into his sister's room, who were 5 and 2, and did the same thing to them as well. He then waited for his dad to come home and did the same thing to him. His dad was actually the brother of a prominent New Mexico politician named Eric Griego. Nehemiah was actually planning to take more lives, but was stopped by the police. In court, he even had to wear a mouth guard to stop him spitting at people. He was sentenced to prison time and will be released when he turns 21, which is in just over two years. Some say the sentence is pretty short for what he did, but a judge said he could be fixed. What do you think about what happened on that terrible day in 2013 to the Griego family? Next up is James Fairweather. Many people have idols. For some, it's noble people like singers, sports people, or Logan Paul. Everybody needs someone to idolize. But some people idolize different kinds of people, like killers. 14-year-old British schoolboy James Fairweather was one of those people. In 2015, he took a man's life with a knife, and then in 2016, took a woman's life with a bayonet. He was planning to take a third person's life, but was arrested and sent to prison with a minimum of 27 years behind bars. The reason for why he did this was because he was obsessed with killers, such as the Yorkshire Ripper and Ted Bundy. And he even had a picture of Ted Bundy on his cell phone. When he was sentenced, he said, I don't give a shit. The investigation to bust this guy took 1,500 officers and 10,000 hours, and I bet they were surprised when it turned out to be a teen. Next up, we have the Thompson Toddlers. In late 2015, a woman from Texas, USA named Raquel Thompson and her boyfriend decided to grab a takeaway pizza. However, they made a big mistake by leaving their four young kids at home. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem, but it seems their kids have an odd idea of what it means to have fun. Their two three-year-old twins put their 19-month-old sister into their oven. When they got back, they saw what had happened, and the baby was no longer alive. The toddler said one of them put her into the oven, and the other made it hot. Of course, they didn't know what they were doing and didn't face any charges. However, as adults, I'm sure they will have a tough time coming to terms with what they did before they could even write their own names. Their parents did face charges, however, due to leaving their kids all alone. The twins and their other sibling, who was five and slept through the entire thing, was placed into foster care. Afterwards, some people said the toddler should face charges, but I'm not so sure about that. What do you think? Next up is Stuart Harling. In 2007, the media nicknamed this kid the most dangerous teenager in Britain. When he was just 19, he was sentenced to at least 20 years behind bars. You see, he took the life of an innocent nurse using a knife. But why did he do this? Well, he simply said it was because he was bored and wanted something to do. The weirdest thing about Stuart's crime is he was wearing a witch costume the entire time. He wore a wig and big dark glasses and said he only stopped when his wig fell off his head. The reason behind his nickname is because after a psychologist spoke to him, he said he sounds like the most dangerous teenager ever. He said that he should never be released, which is why he was jailed for 20 years. Do you think he's the most dangerous teenager on this list, or does anyone else on the list seem even more dangerous? 10 kids who went to jail for crazy reasons. 
coming in at number 10, we have Zachary Neagle. This is one of the most baby-faced criminals you'll ever see. In 2009, Zachary Neagle fired a shotgun at his father's head while he was sleeping on the couch in their family room. Images of him in a yellow and orange jumpsuit looking frightened went viral as this is such a shocking crime. And the fact that Zachary at the time was only 14 years old made his crime even more outrageous. He sat silently looking at his lawyer throughout the whole trial. While in court, he was chained up with handcuffs on his arms and a metal brace around his waist. He also had another chain attaching his waist to his handcuffs. He was sentenced to 96 years behind bars for what he did. Some people thought this was way overboard and felt sorry for Zachary. And it was suspected that his father had been being nasty towards him in some way. And he believed he had to take action against his father to protect his siblings. It's unknown whether this is true or not, but what do you think? Should Zach have gone to jail or is he way too young? One thing's for sure, he looks terrified of prison in those images. We're not sure if it was due to the guilt of his crime or the fear of him being locked up. Next up is Lionel Tate. This criminal kid is very unique. The reason why is because he is the youngest ever kid to be given a life sentence. When he was just 12 years old, he was asked to babysit 6-year-old Tiffany Eunice. The kids ate dinner and were watching TV when suddenly they began wrestling, likely not with Tiffany's consent. Lionel was 170 pounds while Tiffany was just 48 pounds. This meant he easily beat her and caused her to pass away. He headlocked her and smashed her head into the side of a table when suddenly she stopped breathing. An expert said the fight was an equivalent of a fall from a five-story building thanks to the injuries caused. The jury was shocked by Lionel as he pled innocent. However, this didn't fool the jury and he was sentenced to life with no parole. Lionel cried when he was given his sentence, but Tiffany's family were happy that justice was served. Is this life sentence too far for a 12-year-old or is it justified due to what he did? Next up is Petri Kurti. This boy is the youngest person to take someone else's life in the UK. And what's odd is that the person who passed away at Petri's hands was not another vulnerable kid, but a fully grown woman. He was caught on surveillance footage stomping on 47-year-old Glynis Bensley's face. He then boasted to his friends about the attack. He stamped on her face so hard a footprint mark could be seen on her cheek. However, the judge said Petri had a crazy home life and his parents didn't seem to care about rules or any responsibilities. The passing of Glynis apparently began as a robbery, but it went wrong and Petri began to stamp on her. He was sentenced to a minimum of 12 years with good behaviour, but really, what are the chances of that seeing as he's off the rails? His 20-year-old accomplice named Zoheb Majid was also sentenced to 12 years for manslaughter and robbery. In some cases on this list, you can end up feeling bad for the kids and you're not sure if their punishments are too harsh. But in this case, I can't see any good in this kid and he seems to be totally criminal. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree when I say it's a good thing this guy is off our streets. Next up is Alex King. This is one of the most bizarre cases on this list. And it may leave you guys kind of torn when deciding if Alex King is guilty of what he did or not. 12-year-old Alex King said he formed a relationship with his neighbor Ricky Chavez. The intimate relationship lasted for months before Ricky apparently urged Alex to hit his father with a metal baseball bat in his sleep, causing him to pass away. In court, Ricky denied being in a relationship with Alex, but admitted telling him to take a baseball bat and hit his father with it. In Alex's possessions, notes that said Ricky plus Alex in a love heart were found. He also said he did illegal substances with Ricky and played video games with him at his house a lot before causing his father's demise. Alex was sentenced to 8 years in prison, while Ricky was sentenced to 14 for his role. Ricky was also convicted of trying to cover up the crime, washing Alex's clothing which had evidence on it. Alex is now nearly 30 and he says he misses his dad sometimes, but wants to move on. So, was Alex tricked and manipulated by Ricky or did he know exactly what was going on? Next up is Jackie Kiffmiller, but in 2011, she shocked the world, and not because of a great selfie. She took the life of her newborn son at the age of just 19. She pleaded not guilty, but the judge said she knew exactly what she was doing and how wrong it was. She showed no guilt and caused many to shake their heads and cry in court. She gave birth secretly, using a home birthing kit she purchased online. She then googled things like how to give birth and how to cut umbilical cords by yourself. After the birth, she left her baby in a trash container on a random street for it to pass away. It was suspected she didn't want the embarrassment of telling her parents she got pregnant at 19. So she decided to pretend like the baby's life never even happened. She said the baby passed away before she put it in the trash container, but detectives found otherwise. In court, she tried to pin it on the baby's unknown father, but refused to give his name. So she had to take the rap and was sentenced to 110 years. 
Next up we have John Venables. This is one of the most infamous child criminals the world has ever seen. In 1993, he and a friend went to a shopping mall in England. He was skipping school and eventually found himself bored at the mall. He then decided to take two-year-old James Bulger from his mother, who was buying meats at the time. He took him to some train tracks and then took his life, leaving his body on the tracks to make it look like an accident. It's since gone down as one of the most shocking crimes in British history, with John being sentenced to 16 years behind bars. He has since been released under a new identity and people are still trying to track him down and find him. He went back to prison briefly for some more child related charges and was then released back into society for a second time under a second new identity. It's scary to think he could be anywhere without you even knowing and some believe he should be kept behind bars forever. 280,000 people signed a petition to try and keep him locked up forever but it was not successful. What do you think? Has he served his time or is he still a danger to the world? Next up is Curtis Jones. When this kid from Florida was only 12 years old, he did the unthinkable. He decided to shoot his father's girlfriend and then left her body in the woods near his family home. He was arrested the next day as he was not ready for his crime and panicked. He even planned to do the same to his own father and a male family friend. In a journal, it was found he wrote about how he wanted to take his dad's girlfriend's life and everybody else's in his family. He was sent to a correctional department for kids while in custody, but he escaped in 2004 and was caught 24 hours later, and his escape also added an extra year onto his sentence. A judge then moved him to South Bay Correctional Facility for adults for 16 years. He was released last year and is now 29 years old. His updated mugshot was also released and it's speculated he is now not a danger. However, some people aren't so sure and are worried he may commit more crimes. But police assure everybody he will remain on probation for life, so maybe he's not so dangerous. Next up is Christian Fernandez. This 12 year old boy was neglected by his family as they began to only care for his younger brother David. So he did what no one ever thought he would. He snapped and took the life of his baby brother David. David was 2 years old and had already been knocked unconscious by Christian before he passed away. But in March of 2011, Christian wrestled David to the floor and knocked him unconscious again. Only this time, David never woke back up. The mother was also neglectful to David as she searched online for ways to wake him up instead of calling 911. However, she eventually took him to a hospital where he later passed away. Christian was sentenced to life and his mother was also sentenced to 14 years for neglect. But remember, Christian was neglected too, so maybe his mother should serve his sentence instead of him. But then again, he did commit one of the most heinous crimes imaginable, so perhaps justice has been served. One thing's for sure, Christian won't be out until he's at least 20 years old. Next up is Eric Smith. Eric Smith had been picked on all of his life, but one day he snapped. He took the life of a four year old boy which created a media storm because of the victim and criminal's ages. And of course the insane nature of the crime. He lured four year old David Robbie into some woodlands and then took his life. He dropped some large rocks on the boy's head which instantly caused him to pass away. Eric said he was tired of being picked on and went crazy, venting his frustration with life onto a random kid. He was arrested seven days after Derek's body was found and DNA linked Eric to Derek's demise. He was sentenced to life in prison but was actually released in 2014 after serving just 9 years of his life sentence. Some say Eric got off easy considering what he did, but then again the judge says he's now reformed as he calls his crimes quote terrible. Also he was being picked on so brutally to the point of madness, but then again perhaps that doesn't make up for what he did. This is another situation where I'm sure a lot of you guys are torn. Next up we have Antonio Barbo. This criminal kid is very surprising because of who his victim was. In 2014, Antonio hacked at his 78 year old grandmother with a hatchet. He then ran to a bathroom and threw up. The judge said he'd never seen anything so horrific and gave Antonio 36 years behind bars, meaning he won't be out until he's at least 50. Antonio was very apologetic and was crying so much when he read his statements. His lawyer had to take over but he also began crying. He first wanted to rob his grandma but things went wrong. It began as his friend's idea but he was the one who took his grandmother's life. After they hid out in a pizza joint before being arrested. It's unclear as to how he thought he could get away with it but he said it was a moment of sickness and madness. The judge said it was the worst crime he'd ever seen in 24 years of being a judge. But does he deserve to be locked up until the age of 50? Some think so. What about you? Top 10 kids who served crazy prison sentences. Coming in at number 10, we have Alex King. This is one of the most bizarre criminal cases involving kids ever. And with this one, it's pretty hard to decide whether the kid got what he deserved or not. 
Alex King formed a relationship with his neighbor Ricky Chavez. They made many love notes and did illegal substances with each other. But one day it went too far when Chavez convinced Alex to hit his dad with a baseball bat. This caused his dad to pass away. Alex was sentenced to jail for 20 years as a judge said he was manipulated by Chavez. Do you think this is kind of harsh seeing as he was kind of manipulated into doing it? Or did Alex know what was going on the entire time? Next up is Lionel Tate. In 2001, a 13 year old going by the name Lionel Tate was apparently practicing wrestling moves. He was doing it with somebody he was babysitting, a 6 year old girl who was his neighbor. However, she passed away while this was happening. After an investigation, it was found her fractured bones and internal injuries caused her to pass away. Lionel maintained the wrestling story, but the courts didn't buy it. And as this was such an emotive crime that moved the jury, Lionel's sentence broke records. That's right, Lionel Tate became the youngest person ever to be sentenced to life behind bars. At only 13 years old, some say this is way too harsh, but what do you think? Next up is Brian Lee Draper. This teenager was inspired by Columbine in 1999. So in 2006, Brian set out to take the life of a fellow classmate. Him and his friend Tori took the life of 16 year old Cassie Jo Stoddart, but how they did it is what's scary. They hid out in her house and waited for her to return home. When she returned home, they cut the power so the entire house was dark, just like a scary movie. After that, they proceeded to stick a knife into her 28 times. Brian was sentenced to life for this at just 16 years old. He may have been young, but many say it was deserved. Do you agree? Next up is Joshua Phillips. A few years back, a girl in a suburban neighborhood went missing. The entire town had been looking for her for 8 days. Until one day, 14 year old Joshua Phillips' mom was cleaning his room. It was while she was doing this that she made the shocking discovery of the girl's body underneath his waterbed. He said he had accidentally taken her life when a stray baseball he threw hit her in the head. He then hid the body as he didn't want her father to be upset. But this was obviously an understatement as they pursued legal action and he was sentenced to life in prison. Next up we have Eric Smith. Eric Smith had been bullied his entire life. But one day, he snapped and did the unthinkable. He lured Derek Robbie, who was four at the time, into some woods. He then dropped large stones on his head, taking his life. Derek said he was tired of being picked on day in day out and vented his anger onto a little kid. DNA of Eric was found at the scene and he was arrested promptly. He was sentenced to life, but only served nine years. Some say he got off lightly considering what he did. But then again, he did have some bad experiences himself. This is one very odd story. Kenneth Young is a 15 year old, serving a life sentence, but he didn't take anyone's life. When he was just 15, his mother's dealer threatened him into doing an armed robbery with him, otherwise he would harm Kenneth and his family. He complied, but still tried to do some good by stopping the man from taking many people's lives by pleading with him to just rob them and not harm them. But despite all this, he was sentenced to not just one, but four consecutive life sentences. This is of course totally unfair, but it gets worse. The judge who sentenced Kenneth agrees he has been rehabilitated in prison, not that he even needed to be. But despite this, the judge still refuses to release him. Somebody with power should really look into this, as this seems like a massive case of injustice. Next up is Heather Opal. This is another surprising life sentence which will actually make you feel kind of sorry for the kid involved. In 1964, Barbara Marie Opel got into an argument with her boss. So like any reasonable person, she paid four teenagers, including her 12 year old daughter Heather, to take her boss's life. She said she would pay them, so they did as she said. They struck him with a knife while they pretended to ask for a job at his store. What's even worse is her boss was very ill. After the hit was carried out, she paid them $100 each. But they were all very quickly captured and sentenced. And despite the fact her mother told her to do it, Heather Opal was still sentenced to life behind bars at the age of 12. Next up is Zachary Neagle. This is one of the most baby-faced criminals you'll ever see. Images of him in an orange jumpsuit with a terrified face went viral as he's so young. So what did this kid even do? Well, one day he fired a shotgun at his sleeping father's head while he was in the family room. However, this was because his father had been nasty to him in some way. He believed he had to take some action to protect his siblings. But whatever his motives were, he was sentenced to 97 years in jail for what he did. Some say that's too long, but then again, he did commit a very serious crime. Do you think this is way too harsh or should this young life taker face the consequences? 
Next up we have Antonio Barbo. This criminal kid is very surprising because of who his victim was. When he was just 15, he took his grandmother's life with a hatchet. The judge said he'd never seen anything as bad as what Antonio had done, and thus he was sentenced to life behind bars with a minimum of 40 years. When Antonio was giving his statements, he began to cry. His lawyer then had to take over, but he also began to cry. It turns out Antonio's friend actually talked him into it, and it began as a robbery. But it went way too far, and now Antonio will have to live with the consequences behind bars for a very, very long time. Coming up next is Petri Kurti. This is a record holding criminal kid. He's the youngest person to ever take somebody's life in the UK. However, he did not take the life of another innocent kid like Eric Smith. It was actually a fully grown woman. Petri had a crazy home life, which led him to joining a local gang. They then convinced him to stomp on a woman's face until she passed away. She was so badly bruised up, she could barely be identified. And thanks to this, Petri is now serving life behind bars. Not only that, his accomplice in crime also went down for being involved in the crime and for robbery. These are some really wild kids. And as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.